Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding. Today I have a very interesting item that we're going to test out for birding, and that is a Maxitov Cassegrain Telescope. So we got offered this product, and we're probably going to take a look at how it does with seeing actual things like planets and stars, what it, which is what it's supposed to do, but it's said that it can be used for birding as well, and I'm very curious to see how that would go, because we tested one telescope before, and it did not do well for birding but maybe this one would be better. It comes in this sort of like briefcase, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, it makes it easy to carry around. And we're gonna take it out and see what it looks like and see what features it has. Now, I have to be honest, I don't know a ton about telescopes because I have not been in the astronomy field, but I do think it's cool to be able to use them to look at the stars. And it would be really cool if we could use it to look at birds with too, as kind of just a regular spotting scope. So it comes in all of its different pieces, it looks like, and they're each labeled, which is convenient because otherwise I don't think I would even know what I was looking at. All right, we, it has a manual with it. So this particular model is the MC80 model. And I'm hoping that this will tell us how to put it together and pretty much anything we need to know about it, which it looks like it does. So that's good. So let's take a look at the pieces that we have. We have nicely labeled tripod. We have accessories. Let's take a look at the accessories. I'm curious about what we get there. I actually, I don't know why, but I'm just really happy that these are each labeled so you don't have to guess what's in them. We have a variety of different eyepieces to use some different connections that we can use as well. Then we also have the actual telescope tube here as well. So let's just bust that open and see what that looks like. All right, here we go. There is the actual telescope tube. That's neat. That's what it looks like. Thanks to Ryan for doing the unboxing. We're going to test the telescope out today. Uh, I was thinking there was going to be more birds here, but it's real windy and there's not a lot, but there's some gulls that are way out there, so we're going to check it out. But did a little setup work that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, with these telescopes, there's a lot to set up. Like, and there's a lot of like little pieces to screw in, where like a birding scope, it's kind of just more like, here's the main unit, you put it on the tripod, and that's what it is. But uh, with this, we have the tripod that the legs click in to these uh, these openings for them. And then they have the little clips that extend it up and down. And then so you have to attach this gimbal unit onto the tripod. It screws in. And then you have to attach the actual telescope piece. So it uh, slides in here and then you tighten a screw on the bottom. And then you add this guy on by tightening it. And this is like the viewfinder like that helps you focus and make sure you're pointing at the right thing. And then this piece here, which flips it, because normally if you look through a telescope, it'd be inverted. And so this flips it to normal view. And then there's also this phone adapter to put on. So there's a lot of like tiny little screws to unscrew and then re-screw. And if you unscrew them all the way, they just fall out. So definitely don't lose them. And then uh, here's our main kind of telescope barrel right here. and then. Um, has different things to level and also there's like a tighten and loosen button on here for moving this back and forth and then up and down too. So we'll see if we can get a focus on some of these gulls and see how well it works. This is the 20 attachment, photo 20. So on that 90 degree piece there's a 20 and a 10 and I think you can only use the adapter with the 20. I think the 10 will get you closer. Um, but we're going to start with the 20 and see how it works. So I think right away we'll put our phone on to the adapter. So that way it gives us kind of a bigger screen to look through. So you can adjust to the camera to the eyepiece. I think I'm going to take it off just so I can be more precise with it. Okay, that looks looks pretty good so far. And then we'll... Oh no, see I lost one of the little uh, screws popped out. 
So you definitely don't want to loosen them too much. So first we need to use this viewfinder. So we'll use this. I later found out that I installed the finder scope backwards. It should actually go in the reverse direction, which would give a wider field of view. To focus, and then there's a little thing on the uh, front that you spin to focus it, and then we'll look through the main thing. So we'll use the viewfinder first. It is inverted. Is it supposed to be inverted? Let's just try with the main part and see if we can get it to focus. So I'm turning this knob to focus it. See if we can find some of those gulls. Oh, there's some geese. Let's go. So I'm going to use these knobs to move it up and down. Nice, that's pretty cool. I really like using these knobs uh, to just kind of move it up and down a little bit. Picture looks really good. I'm going to zoom in so we get rid of those black circles. So I believe this goose is not too far away, but you know, it's definitely more clear than you'd be able to see with the naked eye. We are getting a little bit of shake from the wind, but it is pretty windy today. Little bath action, goose taking a bath. Sweet, let's see if we can get a gull. Um, I'm just gonna use these knobs and go to the right. So we're way, looking way out there. Sweet, so we can see the gulls too. Um, looks like there's maybe some common golden eye. Let's check, uh, let's check some of those other ducks out. So I think it works really well to have just like your phone in here kind of as a bigger screen and then just adjust with the little focus, kind of with the little focus knobs. Let's use this too, um, I guess just to try it out. I mean, this works pretty well to move it also. Tighten it. Tighten and loosen to move it up and down. So you got a buffle head and some common golden eye out there. The golden eye are diving, so they're going to be definitely harder to get. Got one, but just for a second. There's some uh, some geese way out there, so let's see if we can see those at all. I'll show you uh, kind of where the stuff we're looking at is. So it's uh, way in front of that building out there is uh, where the gall and the golden eye are. So you can actually see pretty far with it. Let's. Uh, Let's see something way out. And it's still pretty clear. Like I just saw a mallard flap its wings. Um, so that's, that's pretty awesome as far as like magnification. This is the 10 adapter and it's supposed to help us even further. And it said you can get different attachments for it too if you wanna pay like, you know, just to get a separate attachment to add on, you can do that too. Uh, so let's let's try this one out. I don't think it works with our scope adapter though, unfortunately. Well, I'm gonna try to digiscope without the adapter. Um, I can see like just about as far, but it is closer up. That's really neat. I'm pretty impressed with this. Um, one of the downsides for birding is it's just like, it just is so bulky and like there's a lot of moving parts. It doesn't feel like something I'm comfortable just kind of throwing in the back of the car. Like it feels, you know, very delicate, but it's very smooth um, and it, it worked well out here. We can see really far. Um, 
I'll kind of just pan with the camera so you can see like some of the areas that we were looking at. So the bridge is way, way, way down there. And we were able to see that. I put the 20 back on. We're just going to look at some geese uh, at close range. I'm actually really impressed with this. Like with the clarity and, and the zoom, it, I'm like, it, it's pretty, pretty cool. Like I said, it just seems like it'd be a little delicate. Sweet, well I think we're gonna call it a wrap here. Um, maybe on a night we can take a look at the moon or some planets or something and see how it works for that too. Um, very cool to use and pretty impressed with the magnification and the clarity. So I did get a chance to set up the telescope on the moon. It is a little cloudy today, so it's not as clear as it would be on like a super clear night, but it's pretty cool to see it up close. And I did have a little trouble finding it, but eventually I got it and uh, really neat to see. Overall, I enjoyed using the MC80 telescope and found that the clarity of the image, zoom, and ability to fine tune your view helped this product to stand out from other telescopes. If you're looking for a good multi-purpose product that you can see birds and other distant objects up close with, this one might be for you. What do you think of the videos we captured? Let us know in the comments below, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.